Okay, so now we have um, question 11, part B, okay, of January 2018, IAL, question 11, part B. Okay, now, uh, we they said the point M has coordinates 20, 12. Find the exact length of the line MT. Uh, okay, for those of you who didn't see part one, the equation of the coordinates of the point T, okay, we found in the end, were 4 and 5, 4, 5, okay, so we got M has the coordinates 20, 12, and T has the coordinates 4, 5. They want us to find the exact length of the line MT. Now, most people would have memorized this particular formula, the length formula, so the length between two points A and B, for example, is equal to the square root of xA minus xB squared plus yA minus yB squared, something like this, or x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, whatever it is. And uh, many people know how to answer this question, just plug those into the formula, get your answer. But there are some students who, who do know how to do this, and they don't understand what they're doing. They just like being like a parrot. Just okay, You put this number there, you put that number there, and you just put that in your calculator, you get your answer, and that's the length of the line. And they don't understand why. So um, although it's going to take a little bit more time than some of you might want, I'm going to explain, um, just go through a little background of this. Uh, this is like a, from IG, or from, uh, yeah, IG level, okay? So now, got my pair of axes. Okay. We got T, which is at 4, 5. So let's just, like, do something not so accurate. That's 4, and 5 is a bit higher than that. So let's say that's a point 4, 5. That's T. Then M is 20, 12. So 20 on the x-axis, so it's a bit further up. And 12 on the y-axis, not so so further up. A bit. It's not, of course, to scale. It's just a sketch to, to give you an understanding of what's going on. So 20, 12 is, is roughly about there. So then we can join those together with a straight line. Okay, so I'm going to join those together with a straight line. Okay, there's a point M up here, and there's a point T there, and we want to find the length of that line. So when we're using this formula here, okay, what we're actually doing is we're actually doing the following. We are finding the horizontal distance between T and M, which is that distance. Whoops. It's supposed to come out as a line up in there. Yeah, we're finding the horizontal distance between T and M, which is this distance here. That's the horizontal distance. And we're also finding the vertical distance between T and M, which is that distance there. Took it a bit too far there. Okay. So something like that. Let's just make that a bit more accurate. Okay. So there we're finding the horizontal distance between T and M, which is this distance here. Okay, we're finding this distance between these two points here. Okay. So this distance here, which is going to be 20 minus 4. You've got 20 minus 4 gives you this distance here. Okay, so that's 20 minus 4, which is 16. All right, and you also have the distance between these two points here, between this point and here. Okay, this is like a right angle because it's a horizontal and vertical there. So you've got 12 minus 5, so that's 12 minus 5, which gives you 7. So now we have a right angle triangle and we need to find the length of the Pythag of the of the hypotenuse. Okay, using Pythagoras. Okay, so we can find the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagoras. And in fact, this equation here that we have is basically just that. It is Pythagoras' theorem. Simple as that. Let me just move this along a bit. Okay, so this equation here is Pythagoras' theorem. It's a change in x, which is that sixteen squared, plus the change in y which is like that 7 squared, the two shorter sides squared. You add them together, and then you find their square root, and that gives you the hypotenuse. So that's basically which is the length, what the length formula is based upon. So the magnitude of the line between M and T, the points M and the point T, magnitude of MT, is equal to basically the square root of 16 squared plus 7 squared. Okay, I'll just show you in this way here. You've got 20 minus 4 squared. That's this length here plus 12 minus 5 squared. That's that length there, squared. And that will give us an answer. The square, the, the, sorry, the magnitude of MT 
is equal to um, answer as follows. Take out the calculator. <coughs> and we get, move out of the way, you've got 20 minus 4 squared. Well, we know what it is, 16 squared. So it's the square root of 16 squared plus 12 squared, plus 7 squared, sorry. 16 squared plus 7 squared, which gives you the square root of 305, okay? Now, the square root of 305. All right, now, the question says find the exact length. Whenever you see something like that which says find the exact amount, and it's a number which comes out as an insert form like square root or with pi, or with, um, well, you won't deal with e's until c3, but square root and pi's, then you have to leave it in this third form, and you should give it in a simplified third form, which this actually is. The calculator will give you always the simplified third form. Okay. So, in the past, such a question would be, no, it was in C2 always, so, yeah, okay. So, that's fine, okay, so that's square root of 305 units, that is the exact length of MT, exact length meaning not uh, unrounded, okay, so you, you, you write it in third form. Okay, I'm going to go on to part C directly, and I'm going to take this with me so that um, I can use this diagram in the next page. So, copy go to the next parallel diagram and paste so move it out of the way a bit okay i don't need that little mark now the next question says point p lies on the circle c such that the tangent at p passes through the point m so let me just get rid of some of these things here i don't need this i don't need this i don't need these lines Get rid of them. Okay. That will do. Now, it says point P lies on the circle C. It means on the circumference of the circle C. Such that the tangent at P, okay, passes through the point M. Okay. Find the exact area of triangle MTP. So now, point P lies on the circle C. Now remember, the, 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 the circle C had its center... The center of circle C was 4, 5. That's a point T. And the radius of the circle was 5, cent five units. Okay? So if we were to draw now, um, let's just make this a bit longer. A bit longer on this side. Okay, if we were to try to draw the circle, okay, you should always, making sketches really help a lot in these type of questions. The radius of the circle is 5. That means... The distance between t and the y-axis, the x-axis, is going to be five. So if that's the center of the circle, okay, it will, it will just like reach the x-axis when it turns out the point four. Okay, so that distance is five because, you know, the radius of the circle is five. Okay, um, it says the point P lies on the circle such that the tangent at P passes through the point M. Now the tangent at P is a line, a straight line, okay, which will just touch the circle. So it passes through M and it touches, oops, something to the line there. Okay. It's like a straight line going through M and it touches, this, just brushes past the circle at the point P. Okay, so this could be potentially the point P. But there's, there's also another point that could be P. Okay, so this could be P. But there's another point over here which could also be P, which is a point going from there to there, where that touches a circle. That's uh, that's possibly another place where P could be, all right? It could be either here or there. It's the tangents going through M, okay, and tangents to the circle. However, it doesn't matter which one it is, because all we have to do is find the exact area of MTP. MTP, well, I'm going to join the center of the circle to that point where the tangent hits the circle. If I do the same thing on this side as well, what you realize is, we've got basically these two triangles are congruent. So whether I find the area of this triangle or I find the area of that triangle, it doesn't matter. I'll give you the same answer. So let me just use the one here on top. On top. Now I've got here a right angle. Y radius meets the tangent at right angle, something that we should know and remember from IGCSE work. We know the radius of the circle is five units. Uh, that was told to us. We found that in part A. We also know the length of MT was the square root of 305. 
the square root of 305. Um, let me just make sure of that. Just turn back to the last part. The square root of 305, that's right. Okay, that was empty. So we're asked to find the exact area of the triangle. Okay, we can do this in, in numerous ways. Uh, probably the easiest way is to find this length and then use a half times base times height. Okay, so to find this length MP, we can use Pythagoras' theorem. It's going to be the square root of now. This is the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. So it's going to be the square root of the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of 305 squared minus the square root, the square of the other shorter side, which is going to be uh, 5 squared. The square root of 305 is the length of that side. You've got to square that. Minus the square of the shorter side. So the hypotenuse squared minus the shorter side squared. So that's going to give you 305 minus 25. Okay, 305 minus 25 is going to give you 280. Okay, so the square root of 280 is the length of MP. So now we can find the area of the triangle. It's a half times the base times the height, which is a half times the square root of 280 times 5. Okay, that's the base, that's the vertical height. So we're going to have a half times the square root of 280 times 5. So we're going to have a half, 1 over 2, times the square root of 280. To make sure you write the 5 outside of the square root. And that gives you 5 times root 70. That gives you 5 times the square root of 70. Okay? That's just using the calculator. It gives us a simplified third form. Okay, in the past, maybe when you did C1 type of questions, which this is not of that type, is C2, you would have to do this yourself. So you'd have to say, okay, the square root of 280, you've got to find um, factors which are perfect squares. You think of the perfect squares that give you this. So you've got like, um, you can think of, for example, 280, you can say 40 times 7, and 40 is made up of um, 4 times 10, Okay, so you'll have it's um, forty times four times seventy. Sorry, four times four times seventy. Okay, so you'll have the square root of two. Uh, so you'll have two eighty is four times seventy, which is going to be two times root seventy. Okay, and then you've got you got that's going to be a half of that. So you have seventy times root five. But nowadays you don't have to worry about all of that because we have. We have um, our calculators, which give us the answer okay, in that form without any worries. Okay, So there we have our answer to this question. And we've finished now question number 11.